Yo, what's cracking? I'm out here on one of the most windiest days there has been this year so far to try and show you guys how to get the sharpest images possible out of your camera. So today's gonna be a super quick video because I'm freezing out here and this light is too nice right now. I'm, wow. wow. <sighs> yeah, so it was too windy to record outside. But we're continuing here. So the most common question that I get asked is how can I take sharper images that look like your images? And before I can even answer, they already give their own answer, which seems to be, oh, because you've got a better camera or you're using better lenses. And that's actually not the truth. Now, for a lot of you guys, this is super basic and it's probably too basic for you so you're probably just gonna skim past this video but for those of you that don't know yet i'm gonna give you a few tips that will just give you the basics on getting sharper images when you go out there and take photography so the first issue that i see when someone comes up to me with their camera and says why is my image just not like yours i look at their camera settings and i notice that they're set to automatic Automatic is not gonna give you the best image. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a common knowledge that you should be shooting in manual. I know it's difficult to do so, but when you're shooting in auto, you have no control over what the camera chooses to do. The camera will pick its own f-stop, it will pick its own ISO, it will pick its own shutter speed, and you have no control over that. And having no control over that means you have no control over the motion in your image, you have no control over what exactly is being exposed in the image, Therefore, your image is not gonna turn out the same as someone who does have control over their image. So therefore, the first tip I would say is to jump out of auto mode as hard as it sounds and get into that M manual mode on your camera and let's start from there. So the next issue that I seem to see when people are trying to get sharper images but they're just not getting it is because they don't have a full understanding of the exposure triangle. Now, a lot of people don't even know what the exposure triangle is, but I will give you a little bit of brief information on that right now. So let's take a look at this exposure triangle that I found on Google. It's not a perfect exposure triangle here. I think the information is a bit confusing, but let me just make some more sense of it. So first let's start on the right here with shutter speed. You'll notice if you increase your shutter speed and get a higher number, you get less blur. Now when I'm talking about less blur, I'm not talking about depth of field. I'm talking about motion inside your image. For instance, this motion here of my hand, the more speed you've got, the less blurry it looks, and the less speed, shutter speed, you've got, the more blurry that motion will become. Also, what they don't tell you is when you increase your shutter speed, the darker your image will become, and if you decrease it, the lighter your image will become. Now let's move on to ISO at the bottom. You see now, if you lower your ISO, you'll get the least amount of digital noise, now this is noise that looks quite ugly in your images and nobody wants noise, so you try to decrease it as much as possible. But the problem is, when you try to keep your image at a low ISO, you end up with dark images. So sometimes you have to increase your ISO to be able to get more exposure out of your image and more light, but that introduces more noise into your image. So there's the issues with that. Now the same with aperture, if you try to go for a lower number aperture, say like an f1.4 or an f1.2, you'll introduce more depth of field. Now depth of field is what you can see in this video right now. You'll notice that the phone is in focus, but the background is quite blurry. Now that's if you're at a low f-stop number, say an f2.8, which I'm recording at right now. If I was to change that to an f10, let's just do that on the lens that we're recording with. You'll notice now a lot more of the background is in focus, but look how dark the image became. So let's put that back. So basically what this triangle is showing us are the issues that come out of what we're trying to achieve every single time we change something in the manual mode. So once you understand the exposure triangle a little bit more, you'll have more of an understanding and more control over motion, light, shadow, everything we can your image. Therefore, you should be getting a sharper, more controlled image. Wow, this lens is really fucked up now with rain. I apologize. But my next point I want to 
get across is a lot of people not realizing they're not using the, they might be using the image stabilizer on the lens sorry but they're not stabilizing their camera properly now imagine in this situation right now it's super super windy right so as i'm trying to aim my camera here to take a shot like no matter what i'm going to get some micro jitter so the smart thing to do will be to put your camera up on a tripod and then take a shot and you'll get more of a sharper image so i'm going to try and do that right now even though it's going on crazy right now this weather let's try and do that this must look like a comedy to everybody else that's walking past right now oh my goodness now in this amount of wind it would probably be smarter to put a bag underneath the tripod right now to give it more weight to ground it more but i'm currently using my bag at the moment here to ground this camera that i'm recording on and the tripod bag is way too light to do that so i'll try and get the best shot i can out of this and we'll see how it goes put the image stabilization on in your lens put it on in your camera if your camera has it put the camera on a tripod if you have the time to do so and then also you see when you're taking a picture when you press down that shutter button believe it or not the camera actually expresses some shake from your own finger so what you want to do is change the settings what i like to do is set a delay timer on my shutter so when i press a button two seconds later it detect the image and what that does is it just waits for the shake to stop and then i take the shot and it should give you actually a sharper image simple tip a lot of people know this but if you don't know this i hope this helps you Another issue that I'm seeing is people are trying to shoot with too much depth of field and this is giving them some issues with inside their images. It's not going to give you the sharpest image if you're shooting down at 1.8 and you're trying to do a landscape shot. So you need to find what's called the sweet spot of your lens. Now most lenses have an average sweet spot range and that's normally from about f5.6 to about f11. So if you want to kind of kind of just keep inside that bar you'll notice that your images will be more sharper from front to back now most kit lenses if you put them at f8 f11 trust me you'll be getting a sharper image so the last but not least issue that you should be focusing on is what format you're shooting your images in and when i say that i mean are you shooting in jpeg or are you shooting in raw now a lot of people when they hammer their camera I take a look and i'm like hmm why does it say fine or something like that when it comes to the image quality it's because they're shooting in jpeg there's nothing wrong with that but if you want more clarity if you want more control over your image you're going to need to use raw and raw because it's a lot bigger information package by itself the folder itself is a lot larger it means it can retain more information therefore it can retain more sharpness and things like that so if you're trying to get a sharper image try to jump out of jpeg go into raw and you'll notice a difference. So that's it for this video. I hope you try to get out there and conquer these issues. They're basic issues and we all forget them when we're out in the field. So maybe just use this video as a template or a guide when you're out there. Am I doing this? Am I doing this? Am I doing this? And by the end, hopefully, more so guaranteed, you'll have a sharper image than you was going to get before. All right, hope you enjoyed it and I'll catch you guys in whichever video happens to come next. Peace.